Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> My throat's a little bit shot this morning, <clears throat> but it'll warm up. I've been preaching for three weeks, and uh, we have beat the devil up pretty bad, and he's kind of sore. <laughs> <clears throat> but I'm going to rest tonight and so my next session will be fine how many people brought your Bibles or your iPads or your phones go with me to Luke chapter 17 I want to get into what we've been preaching about the meaning vitality and possibilities of increased faith yeah. Luke 17 did you enjoy it last night yeah. this was like this right before I came and I started warming up so It'll probably get better as I go. All right. What y'all think of this coat? <laughs> Kathy said, you look like you've been to Vegas. <laughs> Viva Las Vegas. Thank you. Jesus was talking to his disciples and said some things that were, um, they thought was too strong. And you know, tell, well, I'm gonna just read it. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but the offenses will come, but woe unto them through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, that he should offend one of these little ones. Offense is a terrible thing. Yes, it is. Because you get real mean when you get offended. Yeah. 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 Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. From the very beginning of this little session I've been doing, you cannot be blessed the way you want to be blessed unless your faith is increased daily. Amen. Not just Sunday, every day. How I many of you want more blessing? Yeah. More finance? Yeah. More love? Yeah. You have to have your faith increased. How I many of you want more of God's attention? Amen. Gotta increase your faith because that's the only way you're gonna get his attention. So when we finish this thing out on Tuesday, I told you my motivation for accumulation is revelation which has no limitation. I refuse to limit God or limit myself. I don't care if it's spiritual, physical, or financial. The numbers mean nothing to me in the finances because they come. And people have no idea how much what we're believing for simply because that's what it costs to do it. Now, I wish it didn't cost that, but that's what it costs to do it. I mean, our television budget's in the millions. I mean, I wish it wasn't, but it is. But so what, you know, preaching the gospel. So I want to talk today, how do you increase and keep it increasing? I want you to turn with me to um, the book of Timothy, 1 Timothy, I believe it is. And I want to get into this part here. Excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy is right past 1 Timothy. You'd be surprised how many don't, people don't know the scripture at all. Second Timothy chapter two. What was it? First Timothy. No, excuse me. Second Timothy chapter one. I'm sorry. Paul writing to his protege, Timothy. He likes this guy. I have some spiritual sons and I really like them because they blessings, you know. And the key to receiving from God spiritually, physically, and financially is second, first, second Timothy chapter one. Verse 13, it says, hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Everybody must be an example because if you're not an example, people can't hold fast to nothing else. So to increase your faith, you got to say what God says, not some of the time, but all the time. Yeah. Now, it's easy to talk good when everything's going good. But you should not change your vocabulary or your words when everything's going bad. Because if you know in whom you have believed, not believing it, not trying to convince yourself, 
But knowing, when you know something, nobody can change your mind. You say, I know I'm saved. There's no one in this world can say I'm not. You see what I'm saying? I know I'm healed, no matter what I sound like. You see what I'm saying? I don't deny this. This is called whipping the devil's butt for three weeks. <laughs> Excuse my French, but <laughs> it's preaching all the time. Write this down. Sound words produce an uplift. Sound words produce an uplift and are the foundation of the welfare of the church concerning your faith. Sound words produce an uplift and are the foundation of the welfare of the church concerning your faith. You see, there's no other choice in the matter. We must uplift people. And you only do that through sound words. I mean, everybody knows what's going wrong. You don't need to tell them, they already know. I don't have to tell you what's going on in America today. Are you worried about it? Not at all. None, because it's scriptural. As it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be when the Son of Man shall come. Now you got everything you think. I mean, you got people going crazy. You know, you got this LGBT. How many letters these people need? Good God, LGBTQ. What's next? R. And I don't hate homosexuals. No, I would never hate anybody. But I hate sin. Even in the heterosexuals. Because it's the same thing. You see, doesn't make any difference. In God's eyes, sin is sin, missing the mark. So sound words produce an uplift on the foundation of the wealth of the church according to the increased faith that you have. See, every day I must increase my faith. Why? Well, number one, my staff demands it. Number two, God demands it. Yeah. I should be growing daily yeah. instead of Sunday. Come on. In every area of my life. Yeah. So I'm going to be richer today than I was yesterday, and I was rich yesterday. And I don't mean that to be arrogant or prideful, but I know that money cometh to me. I'm not looking for money, but money is looking for me. Everywhere I go, I've had people stop in my house and jump out of a truck and throw $5,000 cash over the fence. $100 bills flying all over the place. That makes for a good day. I walked down the malls of Lakeside Mall, and by the time I got from P.F. Chang's to uh, Dillard's, I had $14,000 in cash give to me. Had to get a shopping bag. People I don't even know. I got in the elevator this morning. A guy said, you just at the planners. I said, yes, I am. He said, sound like you've been preaching. I said, yeah. Want to hear some? See, it makes no difference. I have more love every day. I, I, some people hate me, but they can't hate me more than I love them. And I mean, I got some pretty good haters. But I got love that'll blow your socks off because I refuse to be offended. I will not be offended. I mean, you can give it your best shot. I didn't say you couldn't hurt my feelings, but I will never let it develop the offense because I don't want to become you. I don't want to become what I don't like. I don't like that, see. I just want to be who I am. Write this down. Sound words are the center of doctrinal unity. See, that's how you get your faith increased. Sound words are the center of doctrinal unity to the church because they exhibit the truth in a consistent light. Are you consistent in your understanding of the gospel? Or do you flip flop? A reed shaking in the wind, like the Bible talks about. Sound words are the center of doctrinal unity to the church because they exhibit the truth in a consistent light. I have been consistently a Pentecostal. I love speaking in tongues because the devil can't understand what I'm saying. 
He's spiritually dead, and that language is spiritually alive. He understands English, but he doesn't understand tongues. Because it goes into spirit things that, that he has lost. People are always ask me what I believe. I said the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Even the maps, and I don't know nothing about the maps, but I believe them too. <laughs> you know, people say, do you believe one saved or always saved? I said, what are you asking me? Oh, you asking me, do I believe in eternal security? Yes. I said, yes, I believe in eternal security, but I don't believe one saved or always saved. That's one and the same. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's completely different. Yes, sir. You see, to understand that you're saved by grace. People say, well, you never have to worry about your mama. <laughs> because the Bible talks about the unpardonable sin. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, and the only one that can commit the unpardonable sin is a Christian. Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. Yep. We used to call it many years ago, sending your day of grace away. Remember that? Wow. Yep. Think about that for a minute. Forgot that, didn't you? Mm-hmm. You see, only a Christian can commit the unpardonable sin because you have to know, not believe, but know the truth. Now, why would you want to do that? I don't know. But some people have. So that's what I mean by sound words of the center of doctrine and unity so your faith can be increased. So I always say what I want instead of saying what I have. I don't know why you tell God what you have. You already know that. Why don't you tell him what you want? Because limited thinking, limited words, I preached that last night. See, limited faith stomps you, and you got that from some doctrinal person who tried something that didn't work. But trying doesn't get anything done. See, when you speak sound words, it is spiritual stability. Write that down. To increase your faith, sound words will give you spiritual stability. And it always brings you to a rallying point. It takes you from point A, not to B, but to Z. When you speak sound words, it is spiritual stability. It always brings you to a rallying point. See, because if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to know when you get there. Amen. See, I know exactly where I'm going. I know exactly where my ministry is going. I know the beginning and I know the end. I know in whom I have believed. I know what I'm supposed to do. And I've had so many people try to change my mind and I refuse to do that. Amen. And I've been offered some phenomenal things in my life. I mean, just, 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 I mean, almost unbelievable in finance. I mean, big, I, I've had two producers and two directors offer me millions of dollars to do a movie, move, a movie on my Close Encounters of the God kind. Millions. In California, at a West Coast Believers Convention. You know what I told them? I have millions. (laughs) (laughs) Then then my coat get bluer. I said, you offer me something I already have. I don't mean that to be arrogant. I said, I wouldn't mind you doing the movie, but you want total rights. The only person that's got total rights over me is God Almighty. No one else. Because they're going to put something in there to make it Hollywood. Now, I don't mean that arrogantly. Please don't don't take that as a a bragging here. But you can brag on God. See, when you speak some words, it's spiritual stability. It didn't tempt me at all. It always brings you to a rallying point. So I had to take those producers and directors to a rallying point with this simple word, no. No, thank you. But thanks for asking. I told some, one time I said, I'm gonna do an HBO special or a Showtime special. They said, that ain't gonna happen. Ladies and gentlemen, I did a Showtime special and I was the number one rated person called Falling Out the Pews. People want to offer me variety shows. I'm, God didn't call me to do that. Yeah, but that's a lot of money. I got a lot of money. Amen. I don't mean that to be arrogant. Listen to me. That has nothing to do with me. 
My possessions have nothing to do with me. It's my relationship with God Almighty that's supreme in everything I do. Do you see what I'm saying? Because once you have that, now what you gonna do? See what I'm saying? So the word of faith has worked for me completely. And when I got saved, I gave all my money away so I could start with zero. Amen. And I never got away from zero. I just added another one. <laughs> and another one. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's and another one. Yeah, that's good. Do you see my point? Yeah. I knew zeros. If I get enough of them, it would mean something. Mm. See, that's increasing your faith. I just began to believe that. And they said, what for? I said, to pay for television time to go and preach the gospel to every creature. Already had the cars and the clothes and the shoes and the jewelry. This was before I was saved. So I wasn't interested in doing that. What I was interested in was, God, I gotta get this gospel out. Which brings me to this. Sound words are given for your sake, the church's sake and the world's sake. Sound words are given for your sake, the church's sake and the world's sake. I mean, I'm asked to minister, not only at churches and conventions, colleges, but also um, big, huge corporations. Want me to talk to some of the employees, their executive branch, you know. I've, I've been asked to preach and minister to the New Orleans Saints. When that was, maybe about 15 years ago, I think. I think, I think it was 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> and I, and the Lord said, do it. I said, well, okay, you know. I mean, I like football, but I'm not crazy. But, you know, I like sports. But I'm, I'm not that good at it. I'm a pretty good baseball player. Because you didn't have to be big. Good eyesight, good arm, and good hitting will get you there. So watch this. I went. When I got there, the coach demanded that all of them would come. Now you can tell when somebody's told to come that don't want to come because they're sitting there going. And I know they've been hit on by preachers and people. Can you give me some money for this? Yeah, yeah. You know, they're constantly getting hit on yeah. because they publish their salaries. Mm -hmm. They should never do that. That's their personal business. That's right. Why do you need to know how much a quarterback makes? You would get offended if somebody said, well, how much you make? But anyway, that, you know, they do, they do that. So I went there and, and I said, Lord, this ain't working. Jerry, you'd like to. I said, this ain't working. They just looking at me like, Lord said, say this exactly the way I tell you. And I'm not going to tell you ahead of time. I'm going to speak the word and you're going to speak it at the same time. And I said, gentlemen, I thank you for coming today to hear the word of the Lord. Before we get started, I make more money than all of you. They all went. I got some attention. I got your attention. And you mean to tell me it's gonna take you six years to make a hundred million dollars? Seven years? They went. I had everybody's attention. And then I started preaching to them. You know, they came up to me at the end. Man, pray, pray. Reverend, can you pray for me? Sure. I, get, I said, and, hey, hey, Reverend, can I give you a donation? No, no. Give it to someone else. What? I said, do it to me. Yeah. I said, you got a spirit to give it on you. Just be a blessing on people. I'm all right. But thank you. And most of y'all would freak out over that. Some of them came to my house, beat on the door, and left some money on, 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 on the... <laughs> you ever heard of a preacher turning it down? Okay, let's go over here. Come on. Let me stay in there. Well, my source is not them. Come on, There's nothing wrong with God using them. I don't want you to misunderstand that. I believe in receiving. Don't misunderstand me. But I mean, I know when it's time to receive. See, I know that. Sound words are given for your sake, the church's sake, and the world's sake. I knew. I had to get these guys' attention so I could speak the word of God to them. Boy, I mean, they had tears in their eye. Yeah. One guy said, man, I got a problem with a lot of women. I said, no, a lot of women have a problem with you. 
I said, you yielding. So don't do that. I mean, how much ego you need to have. And if you think she likes you, she just wants to know how thick your wallet is. You smarter than that. You know, I never thought about that. Yeah. So what I went there to do was to increase their faith. Now I got a lot of sports fake call me and said, man, I believe in God to do this. Could you pray with Bridget? Yeah. Now sometimes they ask me things I can't do. Like when Dallas was playing New Orleans in New Orleans. Well, I said, Dallas called me and said, would you come pray for us? I said, no. <laughs> I can't do, not here, buddy. I'll go to Dallas, but not here. Cause we have alligators that are hungry <laughs> in New Orleans. That's right. <laughs> but I thought that was pretty nice. That would be asked. You got to know what to do, when to do it, where to do it, and how to do it at all times. I woke Kathy up this morning. She goes, what? I can tell she's getting irritated when I wake up. I feel, and I got her iPad. And then she was under the cover, just, you know, no, nose diving in. And I went, Kathy. She goes, what? What? And I turned. I said, look at this beautiful dress. Since Sachs on the on the Facebook, I guess it was, or Instagram, she goes, whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, immediately, I had spoke sound words. <laughs> See, you thought I was off the message. I mean, when I went, ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh. She looked at the price. She said, uh, oh, I don't like the price. I said, I don't care. I think it'd look good in it. Buy it if you want. I'll wait for it to go on sale. That blows my socks off. It's okay. I believe in sales. You know, we used to wait for that. You don't have to. But if you want to, fine. It'd be nice if you saved me some money, I guess. But I mean, I won't even know it if you saved it. <laughs> I won't know, Jerry. I don't know. I, I mean, the other day I looked at her American Express, it's $5,000. I said, why is this thing $5,000? She goes, online. <laughs> oh, online. See, <laughs> when they shut down the malls, Kathy found another way. <laughs> she ain't listening. <laughs> Hello. 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 It's about time you look at me. <laughs> See, she didn't want to hear that. There's a lot of time God's saying, hello, 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 and you like this. You won't get your faith increased like that. <laughs> She's watching me now. Sound words impress the hearer. See, this is getting your faith increased. Sound words impress upon the hearer and the hearer an image of virtue. A fixing of the soul. A rule and a model that is pleasing to God. Let me give you an example. I don't charge churches when I come. Now, I receive an offering, but, and there's nothing wrong with paying somebody's expenses. I got no problems with that. Hotels, you know, food, uh, I don't know, airplane ticket or fuel, whatever, you know, however they get there. Me, I don't do that. I've never done it. I've been preaching 45 years, and I've never had a financial deficit. Amen. 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 And this throat has only happened to me in 45 years, three times. Amen. This is the third time. Amen. But that, I ain't stopping. Amen. Amen. See what I'm saying? So watch it. And why? And there's nothing wrong with it. I, I believe that, in fact, when, when guest speakers come to the church, 
We will pay for everything. That's not there. We just believe in that, you know. But me, I don't do that. Why? Well, I call it the David principle. So King David um, wanted to buy a piece of property. And there was this guy named Aranar who liked him a lot. He said, David, I give it to you. Pretty nice, huh? Nothing wrong with that. I mean, who wouldn't? That's a wonderful gift to do something like that. David said, no. See, it wasn't time for him to receive that. Now, some of y'all don't understand that. Yeah. Because your faith hadn't been increased. Don't shout me down when I preach. You can listen to me. He said, no. I will not offer God something that doesn't cost me something. When I saw that, I made up my mind that if I went to a meeting and it didn't cost me something, young man, then it was of no value to me. Yep. I was just gigging. That's a, a, a entertainment tour, a word. It's got to cost me something. Now God has always honored me. I do receive an offer, not to meet my expenses, no, that's my seed into your life. See, but the offering is for a project. And that's the only reason. That's it. See, because if it doesn't cost me something, then it's of no value to me. What makes things expensive when they're rare? Because when they're rare, they're precious. Psalm words impress the hearer and upon the hearer an image of virtue. A fixing of the soul, a rule, a model that's pleasing to God. So I'm not limited in any size of a church because it's not determined whether I go or not by how much money they give me. Yes, sir. Now, who don't need a good offering? Everybody needs a good offering if you're a minister because there's so many things you want to do. That's common sense. It costs money. Right. I understand that. But I am not limited to that. And I've had people say, we didn't think you would ever come. What does it take? And they freak out when they call him off. What does it take to get him to come? And Denise and Gina will say, ask him. Now he's, he's loaded to the gills with meetings, but he'll come when he can. And sometimes it's taken me eight years. I had a man call me from Albuquerque. Would you please come? Yes. I didn't go there eight years later. He had passed away, but his son was was actually pastoring the church. He said, my dad asked you. I said, I know I had the letter. Oh, where's your dad? He said, he went on to be with the Lord. I said, I guess I waited. I guess I was, I waited too long. He said, no, he's here. He placed this church in my, in, in, in my hands. And by preaching for me, you're preaching for my dad. Remember that man, Kathy? Albuquerque. I mean, I was preaching almost every day. Pastor Cho is one of the, Greatest men I've ever met in my life. He's been asking me to come for 30 years. I ain't got there yet. I'm all the time he said, what's the matter, you don't like me? He wants two weeks. I said, Pastor Joe, my wife don't get two weeks. I can't. You see, I will not cancel someone because a bigger ministry called me and asked me. I don't do that. I'm not bragging on myself. See, I have increased faith. My source is God Almighty, and it's going to come to pass. Yes. Yes. You see, which brings me to this point confidence in sound words take large forms and produce large expressions. Yeah, confidence in sound words or in increased faith takes large forms and produces large expressions. It's, it's the truth. Because you see, the only Jesus some people may ever see is the Jesus in you or the Jesus in me. Amen. I'm very aware of that. What are they looking at? What are they seeing? You know what I'm saying? What am I putting off? There's always somebody watching you, especially if you got a little notoriety and you got white hair. People spot that hair in a second, boy. 
I went to the bathroom not long ago. <laughs> the guy said, oh, you, but I said, you, brother, just behind that stall. <laughs> I said, yeah, he said, I can see your white hat. I said, well, how you doing? I don't know who I was talking to. Would you pray for me? Not here. People would. I was walking down Kalakaua Avenue in Honolulu during the day. And this man come running. I mean, Brother Jerry. Brother Jerry. I turned around because he was talking to me. They think I'm Jerry Savelle. My God, you've grown taller. But anyway, you know, didn't say that. <laughs> Just thought I'd say that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Brother Jerry, you know when you were here last year, you prayed for me. I said, did it work? He said, it worked. He said, oh, Brother Jerry, I need you to pray another thing. I said, yes, sir. What do you want me to pray? I don't doubt Jerry had prayed for that man the year before. I don't doubt that. Well, we always talk about me and them being brothers. So I just, I never told him I was Jesse. I said, I'm going to pray for you. And just like last year, it's going to work. He said, yes, it will. I said, yes, it will. Praise God. I prayed for him. Thank you very much, Brother Jerry. I said, that's all right. Do you like living in Fort Worth? I said, I've been there many times. So I said, I didn't lie. I just, come on. And he gets called Jesse a lot. <laughs> it just happens. My one time we was in Italy and they thought Carolyn was, uh, what's that, that movie star? Uh, she used to be married. Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. They thought Carolyn was Jane Fonda. I'll come walking down, and they went, oh, look, look over there, Jane Fonda. I didn't tell you that, I said, she looked good, didn't she? That's all I'm gonna say, I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Carolyn tells me sometimes I don't know how to walk because people stop in this car. She said, Jesse, stick your head down, don't just walk. Keep <laughs> Help me, we gotta get to the restaurant, okay. You heard what Brother Copeland said the other night? This is a pecking order. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland, Jerry Savelle, Jesse Savelle, I'm walking. <laughs> Kenneth stops right there. Boom, Jerry hits him. I hit Jerry. <laughs> right? Wham, he's just shut her down, boy. Looks at us and the Lord said, go in there and bless a man. We just followed him. Went in there and gave the guy some, I forgot how much it was. Pretty good bit. Jerry said, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I said, I'm doing the same thing. That man had a great day. <laughs> Not because of the money we gave him. Because God answered his prayers. Yeah. Now, I don't know who he is till today. I don't believe Brother Copeland knows him. Maybe Jerry doesn't know him neither. But you know what? God knew him. Yeah. And he found the three amigos to, to obey. <laughs> to just obey. And that's all we did. <laughs> See, God was confident in us that we would listen. That he could talk to us walking down the street with us not even thinking, having him on our mind. But because our faith was increased, he could just, boom, throw a thought in there and then we act on it. You see what I'm saying? Write this down. You cannot hold on to a good thing unless you have a good understanding of it. You cannot hold on to a good thing unless you have a good understanding of it. You have to understand what you're doing. That's what Jesus was trying to tell him, boys. That's why he said increase our faith. You see, I like people that hate me because I have a good understanding of it. Mm -hmm. They really don't hate me, they think they do. They hate the Christ that's in me. That's right. it's, it's the devil motivating them. That's it. That's it. That's it. And I realize that I can see that. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't take offense to that. Because I hate the devil too. I don't like him. You see what I'm saying? So when you understand that, you'll understand you cannot hold on to a good thing unless you have a good understanding of it. You have to know in whom you have believed. You have to understand that God want to bless you. Some people say, well, I hope so. No, hope ain't got a thing to do with it. Hope's good. It's a blueprint, but it won't build a house. It's going to take faith to put them two by fours and two by sixes out there. So, so when you hold on, you got, you got to have a good understanding of it. To have a good marriage, you got to have to have a good understanding of it. Which means she's not your slave. I knew that was coming, buddy. I knew. That lady got a good understanding of it. <laughs> yeah. So when you understand that, God's word is so perfect, you just have a good understanding of it. So you hold on to it. You just believe. So here comes the persecution. By that truckload, train loads, everything. Just trying to hurt you. Yep, yep. But they don't hate you. Because if they knew you, they would like you. Amen. They hate what you represent. Amen. I never forget, we went to um, um, Long Beach, California for the West Coast Believers Convention several years ago. <clears throat> I had just released that book, The Everyday Visionary. Remember that, Kathy? So I had signed a contract with the publisher, Simon & Schuster, in New York. We went there and all that kind of stuff. And they said, would you mind, Reverend, maybe going on some radio programs or um, TV or do book signings. I said, well, I don't mind, but it's got to work within my schedule. When we heard that you were going to be in Long Beach, California, I guess they saw my schedule or something. I said, yes. Do you think you could um, uh, go on to a very powerful radio station there? And it would help the book sales and, because they signed up. They gave me upfront money. So they got to get their money back, yeah. you know, sell all that stuff before uh, they start sending you royalties and all that kind of stuff. I said, well, sure, if I work it out. So I think it, I preached uh, a morning service like this and I had the afternoon where I could go. So I go. Now, I don't know much about California, you know, Hotel California, you know, that's about all I know. You know. Been there many times, you know. It's a desert, you know, so I go. What I did not know that Long Beach is one of the biggest homosexual communities in the state of California. But I don't know that. I mean, I don't call a city and say, you got a bunch of homosexuals over there. <laughs> I don't do that. No. So I go in. Billy, I just sit down. This man says, how you doing, Reverend DePlante? I said, I'm doing fine. He said, we'll be on in just about 30 seconds and we'll talk about your book. The Everyday Visionary. I said, great. Pat Robinson loved that book, you know, Seven Night Club. He, he just went nuts over that book. Watch this. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us one of, uh, uh, one of the biggest ministers in the country. And I start turning around and said, who's here? I don't, I don't think of myself like that. That's just craziness. Just because you've been on television. You know, people. And uh, we want to talk to you today. Uh, thank you for coming in today. I said, well, thank you, sir. He said, I heard you hate homosexuals. I want, I'm caught. But we live. I said, no, I don't. No, I don't. I don't hate nobody other than the devil. Amen. Well, you know, I'm a homosexual. I said, I can tell. I mean, that's not a shot. That's not a shot. This is just the truth. Why do you hate us? I said, you said that. I didn't say that. Well, do you believe homosexuality is a sin? I said, now that's true. Well, I was born that way. I said, no, you wasn't. He said, yes, I was. I said, no, you wasn't. He said, yes, I was. And I just thought I'd copy him. Oh, no, you wasn't. <laughs> he, didn't, he, didn't even, he didn't even catch it. 
I said, now I will grant you this. You may not know when you became a homosexual. You might know, you may not know how you become, became a homosexual, but you have been born a homosexual. You were born to create and you can't do that with another man. I didn't say you couldn't fall in love with another man. I'm talking about creation here. It don't work. Okay, how much sex you got? It don't work. You're not going to have babies. I said, sir, let me tell you something. I don't hate you. I don't know where you got that junk at. I'm the only one in this studio telling you the truth. I don't doubt that you're a nice man. I don't doubt that you're talented. I said, in fact, some of the greatest talents I've ever seen has come out of homosexuals. I mean, some of the artwork, some of the the most amazing things. I said, I don't doubt that. I said, but I don't want you to go to hell. I don't believe in hell. I said, that don't change it. You see, I had to increase his faith to hear me. I knew what I was dealing with. I said, I'm the only one trying to, I said, I'm trying to stop you from going to hell for eternity. I'm telling you the truth. I'd buy you dinner. I'd take you to lunch. I mean, I don't have a problem with that whatsoever at all. I don't care what people think or what they say. But man, I'm telling you the truth. That will kill you. Not physically, and it could, but for eternity. Well, tears begin to come in his eyes. And I could hear the Lord said, you got him. You got him. I said, yeah, I got it. Because that faith of his sparked a little bit. And when it did, I grabbed it. He said, we hadn't even talked about the everyday vision here. I said, today, you my vision. I said, I'm not trying to change you, brother. I wish I could, but I can't. Only God can do that. He said, I've never understood my my life. I said, I understand that too. I said, but sir, I don't doubt you're a good man. I just like you to go to heaven. And the only way that's going to happen is for you to accept Jesus Christ in your heart and quit thinking about whatever everybody else thinks about you or someone put a thought in your mind or maybe you had a an experience when you was a kid and you know your body just starting to wake up you don't know you thought well maybe that's what I am you got to work with these things he said man I'd love to talk to you more I said I'd love to talk to you too I said be fine you know what I had some people say my god man I wouldn't go to lunch with that guy you know what people would think about you brother Jesse I said, I don't care what they think about me. I'm on a mission to increase that guy's faith. See, that's confidence. You see, sound words. You cannot hold on to a good thing unless you have a good understanding of it. I had a good understanding of what was going on there. That we had to touch this man and to help him. You see what I'm saying? Man. My God, I mean, I, you know, I've seen heterosexuals do such sin that's just crazy. I've seen it all, ladies and gentlemen. I had someone say, you ought to, you ought to write a book. I, I've had so many parts of my life, starting so young, with the La Costa Nostra and New Orleans on the streets. I mean, you think I'm kidding you? Uh, where's Dan and Ann Stratton? Right there, stand up. You are standing up. Oh, no. <laughs> I know Dan. When, when, we were, when, we rented the, when we rented the Marriott Hotel, remember? I came to preach. Was the mafia there? Yes. Yes. Y'all can be seated. <laughs> oh, they know me. Well, I worked on that same circuit. You do what you got to do. I was taught that. I'm not Sicilian. But <laughs> they would look at me and say, you, you're a friend of mine. I die with you. You understand the life. And I did. And my mother said, oh, Jess, you got to get away. I said, mama, y'all got nothing. These guys got the money. They got the power. They got the women. I'm going with them. <laughs> hey, kid, could you bring this over there? Oh, holy on. 13? Yeah, I can bring it over there. Don't look at me weird. <laughs> what other secrets you've done? Oh, boy. 
Good. Number one, I had it, when I got born again, <laughs> I had to have a sit down. I came to Dallas, Texas, Arlington, Dallas, Fort Worth. And one phone call booked me for 12 clubs from a certain person in New Orleans to an associate in Dallas. Heard a lot of good things about you, kid. <laughs> you understand the life? I said, yes, sir. You know how to make you a good earner? Yes, sir. You know how to make money for Yes, sir. What do you want? I said, that club. It was the biggest nightclub in Dallas and the biggest nightclub in Fort Worth. And I played him because one man said, book this kid. I was 21 years old. <laughs> and I thought, I like this. Chicago, Los Angeles, Kansas City, Detroit, New Orleans, everywhere I went, I had family. Now, when I got born again, I had to have a sit down. What's the problem? There's no problem. I just met Jesus. You did? <laughs> yeah. I said, man, I can't do this no more. I said, I don't know. I said, I, 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 I got God in my life. And they just looked at me and said, I die with you. I said, thank you. He said, you ever need us? You call us. And don't forget us on Christmas and Thanksgiving. <laughs> Come see us. Come eat with us. And I do that. Because they need Jesus just like yes, anybody. Yes. Well, I never thought I needed him. But me and Jerry Savelle needed the mafia one time. Dan and Ed with that too. Philadelphia, right? Man, me and Jerry coming in, we all excited. We preaching in Philadelphia, man. Convention Center. People lined up, and they're lined up there. But we got there late because of traffic and stuff like that. Unions. Unions, man. So we go in there, we ask them, Jerry's crew and my crew, if we could put up our own sound equipment stuff, you know. Because we could do it quicker. The guy looked at me, his name's Frank. I'll tell you something. You get the blankety blank off that stage. No more, this is a union here, you understand? We'll put it up when we're ready. You got that? They get off the mm -hmm. They use a lot of colorful words. <laughs> I never forget Jerry. Jerry's such a good man. He goes, oh Jesus, what are we gonna do, Jesse? We're gonna be late. And I had a number in my wallet, and I heard this voice, call a number, call a number. Sound like God to me. <laughs> so I said, Jerry, stay in. I'll be back in a minute. So me and Jerry, <laughs> I go to get on the phone. They said, what can we do? I said, I got a problem here. What's your problem? I said, I'm in Philadelphia. I said, the union's real strong. Yeah, we control that. What do you want? I said, well, I, I, I want to pay them. I'll, we'll pay them double if we have to. They're, they're scale or whatever. We're not trying to get out of that. But we'd like to set up our own equipment because we're going to be late if they don't uh, let us do that. And he told me, to, and he cussing off the thing. He said, what's his name? What's his name? I said, his name is Frank. He said, stay right there. Call you back in three minutes. I hung up the phone. Call the bishop. Call the bishop. <laughs> and when I was praying, Lord, don't let them put slot machines by the, by the book and take tables, you know, for God's sake. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it wasn't three minutes. Boom, boom. This, you didn't have cell phones, you know. <laughs> they said, it's done. Go on the stage. I said, good. So I start walking over. Here comes Frank. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I meant no disrespect. I'm sorry. Whatever you want to do. You don't even have to pay for us. No, we'll pay for you. No, 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 I'm gonna pay you. I don't want to get hooked into this. I said, you know, 
oh, I'm sorry to mean no disrespect. Oh, I, I didn't know. <laughs> Man, we start putting, here comes Jerry. Sweet Jerry. <laughs> Just as nice to me. He said, wow, Jesse, isn't that something? I said, yeah. <laughs> he said, the Lord work in mysterious ways. I said, and I never told Jerry, but it slipped out one time. <laughs> and Jerry went, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Whatever he told Frank was sound words. <laughs> I don't know what he told Frank. But it increased Frank's faith. <laughs> I, I'm never publicly apologized to Jerry. I'm sorry I got you involved, but look close on Oscar. <laughs> but we, <laughs> you know, so Jerry, I'll tell you, I pardon you. So Jerry comes to my house, and we just love, we're like two kids. We're on the streets of New Orleans. He says, where the guy is at? I said, I said, you don't want to know about that kind of stuff. So Carolyn and Kathy, they are in the Omni Hotel waiting on us. Jerry was getting some, um, he wanted a collector, on a, he was collecting a, a certain kind of a rifle, Civil War, something like that, you know. And I said, well, we'll meet Carolyn and Jerry, uh, Carolyn and Kathy in the Omni. So we got him, we walking in like that. And when I walked in, there's a whole table. Hey, hey Rev, how you doing? How you doing, man? You the man. I die with you, man. What can we do for you? He said, you know, listen, we need to take your jet and move it over here. You know, because if you move your jet over here, uh, the government will give us some money. And we'll, we'll lengthen we'll lengthen the, the runway and all that kind of stuff. You know, you know, you know you get, when you get a jet that's at an FBO that says something, you can get jet fuel and, and the government will give you money. I said, man, man, thank you, man. You touched my heart, man. I said, but I can't. <laughs> I said, I I'm already signed contracts with New Orleans Armstrong International Airport. I can't do that. Jerry's on the side of me. He looks at me. He looks at Jay and goes, you got a plane. <laughs> Jay Jerry goes. <laughs> he said, well, I don't live here. Don't make no difference. Don't make no difference. <laughs> he got to meet a few guys. There was one woman sitting between them. Jerry said, who's that? I said, that's the killer. You don't want to mess with her. <laughs> These are true stories. <laughs> but I'll tell you what's so nice about it. Their babies get sick. Guess who they call? Man, my baby's sick, but Reverend, can you pray? Yes, sir. You think God will do something? You know, we love our children. I said, oh, yes. I said, I have a lie to you. Have I ever lied to you? <laughs> no, since you're 21 years old. Pray for that baby. God, he let baby. They go, what, what can we do? I want to say, get saved. <laughs> get away from this stuff. I just let my light shine. And they say this, we'll tell you something about the Rev. He got juice. <laughs> he got juice, man. I'm telling you. The copy, do, 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 the copy, the boss of the bosses. Listen to him. And I said, God, what are you doing? He said, letting your light shine. I mean, I've had the feds call my office. Do you know who these people are? Yeah. I said, but they need Jesus just like you do. <laughs> I'm not bragging about that. They love Kathy, and I close. They just think Kathy's something. He said, I'll tell you what, man, we like about Kathy, she got your back. Kathy got your back, man. Strong woman. I said, yeah, she does. Kathy comes walking up and we had a party. She starts talking. I'm going, don't shut up, shut up. Because they read into these things. Kathy said, you know, we need to get some more security around our house. <laughs> I'm doing <laughs> Kathy's innocent. She's like Jerry. Innocent. 
good people. They don't sin. They don't do. They just got saved but because they're good people. They didn't have to give up nothing. And one of my friends says, gather, gather. Just drop our name around the house. Ain't nobody touched the house. I look at Kathy, I go, shut <laughs> Kathy goes, oh, thank you. <laughs> About a week later, they called me and said, is that guy giving you any problems over there? Anything? You know, I got a baseball bat. We'll take his kneecaps off if you want. Are you serious? I said, no, I'd have to pray for God to heal him. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Just leave him alone. So when we get around the families, not family, the families, I say, Kathy, smile and don't say nothing. <laughs> Let me do the talking here. Because they read into that. They need Jesus. I just went to New York. Uh, I'll change the name to protect the innocent and me. How's George? Say so he went to college. Now you know what that means? He's in prison. That's what that means. He went to college. What are you getting out pretty good? You know, George likes you a lot. I said, I know. He sent you some cigars, didn't he? I said, yeah, he did. George's cigars. That's not his real name, just whatever. And I look and I go, God, how can I increase their faith to, to look through this lifestyle? Thing? Because that's normal to them. Yeah. That's very normal. Not to you, but to them. How can I get them to... Man, I notice my throat's getting better here. Glory to God. How can, I get, how can I get them to look through that? So if I can get their faith increased, I can get them saved. Get them touched by God. I don't try to change nobody. I can't. So it's a good witness. Lord, increase our faith. I say it all the time. Lord, let me hear more of what you say. Let me hear. Sometime I'll pull up one of Jerry's old sermons or something. I got copies of them, you know. You know, uh, taking notes here. And I, and I read that. And I can hear you talking. I don't know about you. Uh, a lot of people say when, you, when they're reading one of my books, they can hear me talking. Is that right? You know, I mean, well, I can hear Jerry talking. You know, I, you know different things of that nature. And uh, so increase my faith. I need, I'm, I've got, I'm going into battle here. I'm going to need some extra. Now we're going to finish this tomorrow. Are you enjoying this? Yeah. Um, I, and I mean this. There's nothing God won't do for you. Right. Nothing. That's right. If you just let him. Like I was ministering last night. Your faith has got to increase. If we can get this thing happening, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus will come. Well, why have you been preaching so much? Well, when the gospel's preached to the world, the end shall come. I want to get out of here. I want to go into rapture. Now, some people don't believe it. Stay here if you don't believe it. But Jesse going out on the first load. Y'all do what y'all want. I'm going out on the first load. I would be totally surprised if Jesus didn't come in my lifetime. Now, if he don't come get me, I'll go get him anyway. I'm going. I just want him to come. I'd love him to come do, doing one of these believers conventions. Because I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd ask God, God send Gabriel down there. I want to read the morning news. Thousands of Christians blew holes through the convention center. There was light everywhere, singing and shouting. People can fly. It's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is coming. 
Oh, I just know it. I know it. In my conversation with him, he wants to see us much more than we want to see him. Stand to your feet. We'll finish this out tomorrow. Me and Jeru uh, hit Friday with a vengeance. I want to apologize. Uh, I was going to do a book signing, but I, I know if I go down there, I'm going to talk like crazy. And I got one more. I can't help it because I love people. You know, I just do it. So I'm going to rest my throat and I'll be ready to go tomorrow. I think I'm going to sound wonderful tomorrow. You know what I say about this throat? I never thought that till the Lord quickened it to my spirit. Paul said, I bear the marks of a Christian. I bear the marks of preaching. This. Preaching and preaching. Sometimes I get sick of hearing myself. I'm not gonna lie. Let me just go sit down and hear somebody else. Lord said, you do this and I will. And God is so good. So thank you for allowing me to uh, be a part of your life today and for helping us get through this. Come on, brother. Uh, Kathy told me when I put this on, she said, you should have wore that last night. I never thought about it. You know, I got to thinking, when I, I thought about that, I said, that woman is still looking at me. I've been married to that woman 51 years. And she still think, I got it. <laughs> Give Jesus a hand clap.